Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, building a gaming PC as of early 2021 is pretty tough. Stock is low, prices are high, and if you are lucky enough to find the graphics card you want, it's likely priced much higher than RRP. You could wait a few months to see how stock and prices change, or if you'd rather get into PC gaming right now, you could buy a pre-built system. Usually, you'd pay a little bit more for a pre-built, but that might not be the case at the moment, especially if you don't mind buying used or refurbished. And that's what I've done here. This Acer desktop usually retails anywhere from £850 to £1,000 here in the UK, but I picked this second-hand unit up for just £566. That's almost half the price of that higher-end RRP, and better yet, this wasn't a one-off eBay find either, but a set price deal from Laptops Direct, a legit well-established company. So, are refurbished pre-built machines the way to go right now, and is this machine in particular worth it even at this price? Well, let's talk about the specs. The first thing I should say is that this was one of the pictures used on the website, and as you can see, well, it looks a little different. Personally, I like the look of this one more, so I'll let that slide. This is actually a pretty good looking machine, but that is of course down to personal taste. Condition wise, it's actually immaculate, despite being described as refurbished. There are no scratches or dents here on the metal or the plastic, so we're off to a good start. What made me laugh around this side of the machine was the overpowering graphic sticker. Talk about blowing your own trumpet. They're not just good, they're simply overpowering. <laughs> Let's crack open the case. Now I'm not keen on the proprietary motherboard, I've got to say, in fact I hate it. This is such an early 2000s Dell thing to do. Now it's not a huge issue, but it just seems unnecessary. Thankfully, this PC has an i5-10400F installed and supports an i7-10700, so you wouldn't have to worry about replacing the motherboard to get even more performance from this thing. Now I'm very happy about the memory, which is dual channel, two sticks of 2666MHz DDR4, 4 gigs per module here, totaling 8 gigs. This is what I'd call the minimum for modern games, but this configuration will still ensure better performance than a single 8GB stick of RAM, and that is also something to watch out for with pre-builds. A lot of companies like to throw just one stick of low speed RAM into these things and call it a day, just to save a bit of money. In fact, I think I saw a David Does Tech Stuff review about this machine, and I think his machine actually had one stick of RAM, so that's weird. I don't know if sometimes they just feel like sticking two sticks in here or whether you can configure it differently, but it's important to do research and try and figure out what RAM you're actually getting with pre-built systems. So for storage, we've got a 256GB M.2 SSD, as well as a traditional hard drive with a 1TB capacity. The SSD is easily reachable and the hard drive bays sit at the front of the case for easy access too. Perfect for any upgrades you might want to do. Now the whole case does feel a little cramped and I can't imagine the airflow is brilliant, but we have got a rear fan and that is worth noting because you'd be surprised at how many pre-built systems systems don't have one of these. So the graphics card. The mounting plate is longer than the card itself but despite its puny appearance what we have here is actually a GTX 1660 Super from Nvidia. Right now these cards on their own are selling for upwards of £300. £329 was the cheapest I found on eBay as I was editing this video. Add to that the £140 cost of the processor and we'd be up to £469 already at just two components in if we were building something with similar specs ourselves. Of course, we wouldn't have to deal with that terrible proprietary board though, but yeah, I won't ramble on about that too much. Powering this system is a 500 watt 80 plus gold light on PSU, so it's all right, but there isn't much room for it to breathe under the case. But I mean, all in all, we've got a pretty decent set of specifications here for what I think is a fairly okay price tag, especially now. But how does it perform? 
Well, let's jump into a handful of games and see what it can do. Starting with Valhalla, and while Ubisoft titles traditionally put a heavy load on processors, it seems as though our GPU is the limiting factor. I'm running the game with the high settings, which admittedly was a little bit ambitious, especially without tweaking anything else. Regardless, we still saw at least 40 FPS on average, and performance for the most part was fine. The 10400F, despite what some reviewers say, is a great CPU, and can certainly handle more than a 1660 Super. I've run one of these in my system with a 3070 for a couple of months now, and I'm very impressed with the Intel chip, not just when it comes to gaming, but editing as well. Black Ops Cold War with a mixture of medium and high settings meant a plus 100 FPS average. This is bot footage, but the benchmark figures were taken by combining the results of three online games with different maps, as they usually are. The game looks great with these settings, and the 6GB 1660 Super is doing a fine job. It's still a somewhat respectable performer, it's just a shame that the price of it and plenty of other parts has skyrocketed, if you can find one, at all that is. The good thing about pre-built in times like these is that the builders always have access to the parts that we can't get, and this is especially true for big companies like Acer. But we are still limited upgrade wise, the board is proprietary, I've said it a million times, and has one of those silly little custom power connectors, meaning that we can't replace the PSU to add a more powerful graphics card. However, with that said, the 500 watt unit does have one 6 pin and one 8 pin connector, so it should be able to handle most modern GPUs anyway, and I'm sure there is an adapter somewhere for the whole PSU power connector thing. You know, talk about making me go the long way round, but if you really wanted to, I'm sure you could get an aftermarket PSU working in this thing. Right, so the currently very demanding Cyberpunk 2077 at medium settings looks great and runs well too. We were just shy of averaging 60 FPS, though the frame rate will change significantly depending on where you are and what you're doing. Crowd density was still set to high just to make the city feel a little more alive, and it seems as though performance doesn't change that much even with the low option selected. Fortnite is, well, Fortnite, so high settings is easily doable here, and I experienced no significant issues. There were the usual dips and stutters that occurred as we dropped out of the battle bus, but apart from that, the game played fairly well. I tend to avoid epic settings, just like I do with ultra settings in other games, because usually you can't really see a difference in visuals, but the frame rate is still affected, so high is always the way to go. The ever popular GTA 5 runs very nicely too with high settings, again no issues here, we didn't even see any frame dips really. The 10400F and 1660 Super make for a decent combination, but it'll be interesting to see for how long this is the case. It's clear that the processor will last way longer in terms of how well it handles newer games, and when it comes to upgrading that graphics card as I said, well you should be able to get away with it with this power supply because it does have an 8 and 6 pin connector. Finally then, Red Dead Redemption 2 runs really well, we were using the highest favour performance preset, which essentially combines high, medium and low, and gives us something that looks fantastic, but also runs with close to 90fps on this PC at 1080p. Overall then, at around £560, I think this refurbished system represents decent value for money, especially considering it retails on some sites for near double that. Now I wouldn't pay full price, not just because I think that's a bit much, but that silly motherboard has really annoyed me, to be honest. That said, I do believe that looking out for refurbished or secondhand pre-builds is a good idea if you want to get into PC gaming because there are some bargains to be found and at this point in time, it won't necessarily cost you any more than it would to build something from scratch. That's the way I'd work it out. If you think you found a good deal on a pre-built, just add the cost of the individual parts together and see how prices compare. Also, try and find out what motherboard and PSU are inside any build that you want to buy and whether or not the system uses single or dual channel memory. With all that said though, well, thank you very much for watching. The reason I took a look at this pre-built today is because I want to take a look at more 
pre-built systems in the future on this channel, especially during the current times when stock is pretty much non-existent for a lot of stuff and prices are quite high. As I said, not necessarily buying this pre-built, but any pre-built might be the better way to get into PC gaming right now. Though if you can find one of these for a similar price, it doesn't really seem too bad, to be honest. It's just that the case inside doesn't really offer great airflow. And yeah, there are a couple of little problems here and there, like there are with most pre-assembled systems, I guess. Nonetheless, though, let me know what you think of this Acer machine in the comments below. Let me know if you've got one of these. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one, where we'll probably be taking a look at a refurbished gaming laptop.